Hello everyone, welcome back to Whiskey Wars. I've just finished my festive whiskey of 2023, the whiskey that I'm going to be drinking on Christmas Day. So hopefully you've all seen that video. If you've not, it's on my, it'll be the most recent video that I've posted. And today I want to tell you guys my favourite whiskey that I've reviewed in 2023. So I have a little list of all the whiskies that I reviewed this year. There's 19 of them. I'll quickly read them out to you guys. We have the Bamore number no. one, the Bamore 10 year old, the Laphroaig Law quarter cask 10 year, 10 year cast strength, select and four oak. We have the Lagavulin 10 year, the Lagavulin 16 year, the Drumshambo pot still, the Teeling pot still, the Jameson crested, the Jameson crested stout edition, and the Jameson stout cask mates. The Campbelltown Lock, the Kilkerran 12 year, the Kalila Mock, the Old Pulteney 12 year, Jira 12 year, L Lechik 10 year, Talisker 10 year, Arbeg Wee Beastie, and Arbeg 10 year. So, quite some good whiskies that I've reviewed this year, and some not so good whiskies as well. If you know, you know. I can certainly think of two of them that I did not like this year. Definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, the Jameson Crested Stout Edition. That one just did not work. If you've seen that review, I posted it about a month ago. I did not like that whiskey at all. Um, and the other whiskey that I actually quite liked on the nose, but the taste was a big, big disappointment, and that's the Jura 12-year-old. So don't worry, those two will not be in the running for my Whiskey of the Year 2023. In fact, I'm going to choose five whiskies, talk a little bit about them, and then say my favourite of those. So personally, the whiskies that I like the most out of the ones that I've reviewed this year are going to be the Laphroaig Quarter Cask. That's just always a firm favourite of mine. The Lagavulin 16 year. The Teeling Pot Still. The Campbelltown Lock. The Ardbeg Weed Beastie. And the Lechick 10 year old. Now, I do want to mention, I've just realised I've named six. So I'm going to eliminate the Lagavulin 16 year from the Whiskey of the Year 2023 because of the price increase. On offer, and I, I picked it up on offer for £65, that's still a lot of money. It used to be £50 and RRP is around £80 to £85. So that whiskey is not going to be on the list for the top five. So we have the Lechick 10, the Ardbeg Wee Beastie, the... Lafroy Quarter Cask, the Teeling Pot Still, and the Campbelltown Lock. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while now, you will know that I absolutely adore Lafroy. It was the Lafroy 10 was one of the first whiskies I tried, and contrary to popular popular belief, when they say don't try a Lafroy or an Isla as your first whisky, it will put you off for life. It made me a fan for life. So Lafroy's always got a special place in my heart. However, if you've seen a video that I posted a few weeks ago on the channel about Laphroaig, I do believe the new bottlings have got a little bit more sweet and a little bit more generic. And it's just that, lost that little bit of that unique sparkle that I had about Laphroaig's, that dry ashiness. So even though the Laphroaig Quarter Cask is still an incredible whiskey and still makes my top five, and possibly will for the next few years, it's not going to be my Whiskey of the Year 2023 either. So we have four whiskies in the running. And they all could be the whiskey of the year. And I'll just quickly brief on why they 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 are such uh, good whiskies. First up with the Campbelltown Lock. This is a relatively new whiskey. I think it came out at the end of last year, but there was a new one released around the summertime this year. As you probably know, this year, getting a whiskey from the Springbank Distillery is nigh on impossible. You have to pay obscenely high second uh, second market prices, uh, and it's just it's just really sad. I love Springbank, absolutely love them. Possibly one of my favourite whiskies um, Springbank makes, and uh, I, to know that I probably won't have too many more Springbanks in my life is very sad. However, this Campbelltown Lock is a whisky that's been released by the Springbank Distillery. It's a blended. Uh, malt whiskey of different whiskies from Springbank. 
so it's not going to be as intense or as smoky as a lot of Springbanks. But it has some of that nuance in there. But for me, this definitely could be the whiskey of the year this year because it allows people who haven't had Springbanks to have something from the Springbank distillery. And it's non-chill filtered, it's bottled at 46% and it is a really good whiskey as well at an affordable price. It's around £40 in the UK. You can get it for around £35, maybe even a little bit less. So very well priced. It's available. It's affordable. And also it's a quality, quality whiskey from an amazing distillery. Next up, we have two of my favourite whiskies, the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. It's just sensational. In fact, this might be my favourite Ardbeg whiskey. And I know that's controversial, and I know a lot of people will say, Oogadal, Oogadal, Oogadal. But let me explain why. It's still 47%, non-chill filtered, natural colour. I think it's natural colour. I'm not too sure on that. But non-chill filtered, 47%. It's sherried, like the Oogadal. But it's £33 in the UK. Now, the Oogadal is 65 It's twice the price. And to be honest with you, I'd rather have two bottles of the Wee Beastie than one bottle of the Oogadal. And so for me, the Wee Beastie is just a, a sensational, um, <laughs> sensational whiskey. It really is. So that deserves a mention. That's on there for sure. And my favourite Peated Island malt, the Lechic 10. A little bit of a price bump this year, um, which is a little bit sad. It was around £35 normally. It's now around forty, forty-two pounds. Not too, not too much of a price jump, but it is, it is noticeable, um, which is a little bit, a little bit of a shame. But it's still an incredible whiskey and well worth the money. And then finally, we have an Irish whiskey. This one took me by surprise. I bought this whiskey about a year ago, maybe even a bit more actually, maybe a year and a half ago. And I don't know if it was the neck pour. I don't know just how I was feeling on my whiskey journey at the time. It didn't do a lot for me. And I recently came back to it doing a review with the Drum Shambo. I don't know whether I've posted that on the channel yet or not. Um, but it really surprised me. And it, I really, really enjoyed it. Lots and lots of tropical fruits on that whiskey. It was sweet, but not too sweet. It had a beautiful balance to it. It's a whiskey that I really, really liked. Although it is around £50, so it's a more expensive and possibly the most expensive of the five actually. So that's not going to be the whiskey of the year, even though it's really, really good. So the Irish drink is out there, the Teeling Pot still, probably the one to get in my opinion this year. And just before I reveal the winner, the whiskey of the year 2023, if you could please click the subscribe button down below, that would really mean a lot and I'd really appreciate it. I think we're currently on 550 subscribers. So the more the merrier. So please, if you haven't already, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. And now the official unveil. My whiskey of 2023 is going to be, if you clicked the subscribe button down below, I'll, 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 I'll give you a few more seconds. I'm just kidding. I, 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 <laughs> I needed that little bit extra time to decide which whiskey I was going to pick. It is a close one. The, all these whiskies are incredible whiskies that I've shortlisted. But for the reason that I mentioned, and it's a quality whiskey for a quality price, my whiskey of 2023 is going to be the Campbelltown Lock. My whiskey, my whiskey of 2023 is going to be none other than a blended whiskey. The Campbelltown Lock. 